Someone brought my attention to the fact that Brazil's wetlands are on fire and I'm just going to show you a couple of quick videos, one minute each. This one's one minute, 15 seconds. I'll let it roll through and then draw your attention to some of the things within it. First, notice the smoke is blowing to the left where the already burned area is and the unburned area is on the right. If the smoke if the, if the fire was being driven by the wind, it would be going the same direction as the wind. In this image, you can clearly see the already burned image, I'm sorry, the already burned area is on the left. The unburned area is on the right. The fire is moving to the right. It came from the left. The smoke is moving to the left. The fire is moving the opposite direction of the wind. This is something that I mentioned in my previous video and I've mentioned many a times. The fire, and they show another example of it here in this video. Wildfires in Brazil's Pantanal wetlands so far this year have surged nearly tenfold compared to 2023. According to local media on Tuesday, official satellite data showed a 980% increase in Pantanal fires through June 5th, compared to the same time the year before. The figures have raised alarm as peak wildfire season approaches. They're the highest levels seen since 2020. Weak rains since late last year have disrupted seasonal flooding, making the region more vulnerable to fires. And in the Pantanal, the world's largest tropical wetland, the terrain makes those fires difficult to fight, according to Marcio Yule from Brazil's Environment Ministry. It's an area that's difficult to access with subterranean fires as well. These peat fires make combating them even harder. The latest surge in fires follows unusual blazes in late 2023, when El Nino delayed the rainy season. In November, more than 4,000 fires were recorded, compared to the historical average of 584. On Wednesday, Brazil signed a pact with Pantanal and Amazon governors to fight the wildfires. The state of Mato Grosso do Sul, where part of the wetlands lie, has already declared an environmental emergency. So I'll probably just pause it at a couple of spots uh, if I miss anything. But it says, wildland fires have surged tenfold according to satellite imagery. It's ten times the land mass area from satellite imagery. He also gives a couple of numbers that this year they've had over 5,000 uh, or over 4,000 separate fires compared to their average annual or possibly their previous year of 2023 of 500. That's an eight-fold increase in the number of fires and nearly ten-fold increase in the area of landmass that's on fire this year over last year, 2023. He also says that they're approaching their drought season. Just by throwing the word drought into the story, the average listener goes, oh, it's the drought. That's what's caused it. No, he said they are approaching their severe drought season. They're not even in drought season yet. And by the way, these are called the wetlands for a reason. They say they're 10 times bigger than the Florida Everglades. And another thing you'll notice, he says, is that these subterranean fires, the peat fires, he calls them. This is something I drew your attention to last year with all the Canadian fires where they said the same exact things that we are having to dig deep into the peat. In order to extinguish these fires, we have to dig them up and then put them out. And the same firefighters in Canada said we have to walk up to these trees and put our hand on the tree to see if it's hot. And if it is, we cut it down and extinguish the fire that is inside of it. These trees are burning on the inside, the firefighters of Canada said, and that is something we are not used to. I'll also show you, I'll point out a plasma fire signature or two here. I think I covered all the bases about what we're going to... Wildfires in Brazil's Pantanal wetlands so far this year have surged nearly tenfold compared to 2023. According to local media on Tuesday, official satellite data showed a 980% increase in Pantanal fires through June 5th, compared to the same time the year before. The figures have raised alarm as peak wildfire season approaches. They're the highest levels seen since 2020. Weak rains since late. 
those trees that are sticking up from the burned ground. This is a thing that I call ground scorch. You're going to see another good example of it. I've drawn people's attention to it before where weeds are sticking up from the blackened ground where certain weeds, even just small weeds, not even big trees, are unburned while the ground around them is scorched and this is how the electricity flows through the ground and burns things unevenly. You'll see another example of this here in one moment. Last year have disrupted seasonal flooding, making the Here, you see all the pinkish orange plants or trees that are still intact and unburned, and then you see the little white skeletons of trees that turn to ash. These are probably two different types of trees, two different types of foliage. Nonetheless, the unburned trees that you still see standing are surrounded by burnt ground, ground scorch I call it along with other foliage that did burn completely and it leaves those white skeletons of the plant that are the outline of the plant left in ash like a chalk body outline almost it's more vulnerable to fires and in the pantanal the world's largest tropical wetland the terrain makes those fires difficult to fight there's another example of where it's blowing back onto the already burned area that means the fire should be going the same direction as the smoke and those guys don't have to worry about it because the fire is going to blow back on the already burned area and put itself out that's what normally happens when the wind shifts directions and blows the fire back onto the already burned area that is the idea behind firemen when they do a, a burn they burn an area to where all of the fuel is already gone, so when the fire hits that area, it's got nothing to burn, and it stops. Well, that is what would be happening right here in this image that you're seeing. The fire is going back onto the already burned area, so it's going to stop. But that ain't how this fire works. This fire goes the opposite direction of the wind routinely. I've shown it many times. In the upper left, you'll notice there is some more weeds or foliage that is unburned upper left corner surrounded by blackened area according to Marcio Yule from Brazil's environment ministry it's an area that's difficult to access with subterranean fires as well these peat fires make combating them even harder subterranean fires these peat fires make it even harder to combat when that's what he's referring to when he says peat fires they call it peat moss it's decomposed carbon rich biological material basically on its way to becoming coal and oil the decomposed leaves and dead animals and all the biological material builds up and creates a layer that's carbon rich and burns a lot like coal i guess i don't know but it's underground subterranean fires Latest surge in fires follows unusual blazes in late 2023 when El Nino delayed the rainy season. In November, more than 4,000 fires were recorded, compared to the historical average of 584. On Wednesday, Brazil signed a pact. So there he said the historical average of 584, but this time we have over 4,000. That's an eight fold increase. But the previous statistic they cited wasn't the yearly average 10 times 980 percent more fire than the yearly average no 900 percent 980 percent more fire area burned than the same date last year june 5th and i'll bet last year there was far more fire than the historical average yet we have 10 times as much fire this year as last year and last year we had 10 times as much fire as the year before etc etc with pantanal and amazon governors to fight the wildfires the state of mato grosso do sul where part of the wetlands lie notice in the foreground on the left lower left side those are weeds sticking up out of scorched ground notice in the background and all the trees that are still unburned this is the way this mysterious fire works it's electricity going through the ground it burns some things and not others it'll scorch all the ground and leave these dry weeds in the foreground on the lower left completely untouched along with everything else that's unburned i've been doing this long enough it feels like i'm just repeating myself but for those of you that are new here 
that's a pattern that's repeti repetitive and an indicator of plasma fire. 2023, when El Nino delayed the rainy season. In November, more than 4,000 fires were recorded, compared to the historical average of 584. On Wednesday, Brazil signed a pact with Pantanal and Amazon governors to fight the wildfires. The state of Mato Grosso do Sul, where part of the wetlands lie, has already declared an environmental emergency. So after someone brought this to my attention, that Brazil's wetlands are on fire, I googled it. And here you see the first, the first one, which we just watched, is three days ago from Reuters. This one's from 11 hours ago, but all of the rest are from three years ago. World's largest wetland on fire in Brazil. Brazil's prison inmates trained to fight wildfire. That's a different, in, in Brazil's wetlands three years ago. Brazil's world's largest wetlands on fire, devastated region 15 times larger than Sao Paulo three years ago. So when they were just telling you that there's 10 times as much fire as there was last year, three years ago is when they first started telling you, oh, guess what? It's all burning up. Three years ago. Most of these entries are from three years ago. So, as I've said, it's been increasing year over year, 10 times as much this year as there was last year. Guess what? If we have 10 times as much next year, there ain't going to be another summer. I've been saying that for a while because I've been documenting plasma fire for six years. And each year that I've documented it, it has increased over the previous year a little bit until 2023. Last year, all of Canada was on fire. Greece. Uh, Chile, Hawaii, the amount of increase is exponential year over year. It is a logical, it is a conclusion one would come to through logical deductive reasoning and sound rationale that at this rate you can plot it on a graph and determine how much longer we have on this earth. And that is why we're seeing... A lot of the moves that we're seeing by the militaries of the world, they all want to be king of the ash heap. They know shit's about to go real. And when it does, they've all got their plans. And to fake a war, they're all cooperating hand in hand. As they fake a war to keep the public distracted while the world burns. On that note... David Nino Rodriguez has a guy named Juan O'Savin on his show on a routine basis that predicted the Cuban Missile Crisis. And he said it over two years ago, and he's said it at least five or ten times since then. And now, we're having exactly what he predicted. Another Cuban Missile Crisis. So as you see this stuff happening, it is theatrics, it is planned. Juan O'Savin apparently knows the narrative that was coming. I don't know anything about Juan O'Savin. I don't think he has any other social media. Maybe someone can clue me in. Have you seen this guy anywhere besides David Nino Rodriguez? All you see is his feet. He never shows his face. Apparently he's in the loop with some people that are in the know. And he gave us a heads up that there's a Cuban Missile Crisis coming. And the United States is going to have a near-death experience. So a lot of the stuff that you see revolving war is staged to cover up for what's happening. I've said it before, there's only one news story. Everything else is a distraction or a side effect. As they talk about drought and humidity, neither of which have anything to do with these fires. Sorry, I'll cut this video now. I'll end it with the only other video that I see when I Google the Brazilian wetland fires. Fires continue to ravage the world's largest tropical wetland located in central Brazil. According to Brazil's National Institute for Space Research, there has been a 980% increase in the number of fires this year compared to last. The blaze comes as a result of weak rains which have disrupted the usual seasonal flooding. The figures have raised alarms as the region heads into the riskiest season for wildfires during the summer. The wetlands are...
as it heads into the riskiest season. They're getting ready to go into their drought season. They're not in drought season yet. They're about to go into their drought season, and it's already on fire. Guess what? That means it's going to probably take its toll on Brazil. And Brazil's not alone. It's world on fire, like Sarah McLaughlin says in her song. Between 10 times the size of the Florida Everglades and home to a number of animals, including jaguars, anacondas, and giant ants. Fires kid.